The craziest thing ever happened this morning. I was on MLB Network. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. There's only one person on this planet that I simp over and it's Kelly Nash. Look! Fans are loving it. Here's an analogy for you that I, I caught on Twitter. How about what? this what? Here I million. come. Fernando Tatis Jr., 340 million. The Padres are now equivalent to the cool house that always gives out jumbo-sized candy for Halloween. That's the lighter size. <laughs> you know the homes? <laughs> I made Kelly Nash laugh! Mom! Hey. What's going on everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. Thank you all so much for stopping by. We're going to go ahead and stop fanboying before it gets out of hand. We have so much to talk about today. We all saw my tweet in the intro of today's video talking about how Fernando Tatis Jr. just got paid. And speaking about Fernando Tatis Jr. and being on TV, I'm actually going to be in a television series with him later on in the year. It's called On Deck. Make sure you guys go follow them over on Instagram. It's going to be with me. I have a very very small part, so don't expect me to be dabbing up Fernando Tatis Jr. or anything like that. But 2021 is going to be a crazy year for Fuzzy Nation. Thank you all so much for supporting me because it would not be possible without you. Hey guys, it's Fuzzy from the future. I was editing today's video and this tweet popped up. JT Ramuto on the first day of spring training broke his thumb. He's going to be out maybe past opening day. I'm so sorry, Philly. So yesterday was day one of spring training and we saw Nolan Arnato in a Cardinals uniform for the first time ever. And I still cannot believe the Rockies gave him away on top of adding $50 million in cash. The Cardinals absolutely fleeced the Rockies. We also have two players retiring from the game of baseball. First is a little bit weird because he's more of a celebrity and more known as a football player than anything else. Tim Tebow is retiring from the Mets organization after posting a whopping 638 OPS and had more errors than outfield assists. So overall, while he was living the dream and trying his best, and I could respect that more than anything because he was showing that if you have a dream you should chase it no matter how hard it is he just he wasn't very good another player that is leaving the game of baseball Brian Dozier this one is a little bit more close to home considering he was on the twins and I'm an Indians fan he had a pretty solid career a 23.1 war I think three separate times he was in the top 30 for MVP and twice where he was in the top 13 so Dozier in his peak was one of the better offensive and defensive second basemen in the entire game so Golf clap for Mr. Dozier. He's going to be missed. Now, the final quick news I want to talk about before we get into the Fernando Tatis Jr. contract as well as the plethora of free agents that are going to new teams. The Blue Jays will not be playing in Toronto for the second consecutive season. They're going to be playing in Dundon. We all know that Florida lives by its own separate rules, so at least they're going to be able to play baseball. But this is the home of the Blue Jays low A team. They're actually called the Dundon Blue Jays. So there's not really much that they're going to have to change in regards to the team name, just change Dundon to Toronto. There you go. So let's break it down right now. Fernando Tatis Jr. at 22 years old. I'm 24 for reference, so I can't believe that I'm even saying this. He was just given a $340 million contract for the next 14 years, and everyone and their mother is saying that he's overpaid. It's not going to be worth it. In the long run, this is actually going to be a win-win scenario for both the Padres and Fernando Tatis because he's going to get generational wealth, but he's only going to be making about $24 million. So Okuna. Ronald Acuna Jr., he needs to fire his agent immediately. I got this from my boy Jerry over on Twitter. How can you explain this? Acuna is just as exciting, and it's kind of been the Fernando Tatis Jr. of outfielders. He signed a $100 million contract extension for eight years with the Atlanta Braves. He got swindled. He got screwed worse than the Rockies and the Cardinals Nolan Arenado trade. Like, how did that happen? This also makes me wonder how much money is Juan Soto going to get? Because Fernando Tatis Jr., he, he's amazing, but he is not the hitter of Juan Soto. We are talking about the second coming of Ted Williams. That's how good Soto has been so far through his first 300 games. He's been a machine. So like my tweet said at the beginning of the video, the Padres are literally the cool house on the street that gives out all of the jumbo candy on Halloween. Their infield alone is worth 800 plus million dollars. You have Eric Hosmer, you have Ha Young Kim, you have Fernando Tatis Jr., and you have Manny Machado at third base. That is so much money. So the question right now remains, do we think that the Padres are going to be able to keep this up? Because Boob Nightingale, he put out a very negative tweet saying, yo, the Padres aren't going 
going to have any fans in the stadiums until August. Can you stop that? Stop being so negative. Can we just congratulate Fernando Tatis Jr.? But I guess he does have a point where the revenue isn't going to be there for the next few months. So is it worth it? In my opinion, Fernando Tatis Jr. with his 154 OPS plus through his first 143 games, and he has a 150 WRC plus. If you don't know what that means, it's okay. We'll explain it in a future video. But those are cream of the crop elite numbers in terms of your first 140 games. I mean, he is the first ever player with 30 bombs and 20 stolen bases in his first 100 professional games. And he's going to be on the cover of MLB The Show 21, which is the first time ever that that game is going to be on Xbox. I mean, the kid is owning baseball right now, and he's going to be in a television show with Fuzzy, so that makes him even cooler. So let me know in the comment section down below, do you think that the Padres overpaid, or are you in the camp that says this is a great contract for both sides because he's going to get paid $24 million over 14 years? So let's say he does reach his ceiling, and he's one of the better players in baseball. He's actually going to be underpaid in year four or five, so keep that in mind. Moving on over to the Oakland A's, they signed two players, Trevor Rosenthal and Mitch Moreland. We're we're going to talk about Rosenthal first because he got $11 million. This is the same guy that was out of baseball just a few years ago with arm problems. And I can't remember his exact ERA, but when he was with the Nationals, he was the worst relief pitcher in baseball. And then he got released and he was not going to be able to make it back, but he believed in himself. Now he's getting a cool $11 million paycheck from the A's. So the A's have had a pretty good offseason with their bullpen, which is crazy to say, considering they've lost Liam Hendricks. They were able to re-sign Yusmero Petit. They traded for Adam Kolderick from the Dodgers, who is the Juan Soto killer. That's high praise from someone that is the next Ted Williams. You also have Sergio Romo and then finally Trevor Rosenthal. So the A's, they refuse to give up that money ball approach. We'll be here for the next decades, I feel like. I don't know when they're ever going to spend big time money, but $11 million to a reliever? I mean, that's saying something. They usually don't do that. So maybe this is the start of a new trend for the A's. They also picked up Mitch Moreland for under $3 million. So he is going to be their new DH because they shipped out Chris Davis. Moreland has been really good over the last few seasons. He wasn't as good with the Padres as what he was with the Red Sox. So something to keep in mind. But then again, it was a 60 game schedule. So who cares? The Yankees are having a very, very good offseason and they got even better with the addition of Derek Dietrich. Now say what you want about Dietrich, the fact that he could not hit a lefty if he fell off a boat. He has a career 107 OPS plus, and if you don't remember, 100 is an average OPS plus. So he is an above average hitter. He absolutely rakes, and uh, oh yeah, he's this guy. <laughs> So he's going to bring some muscles and some swag to the Yankees if he does, in fact, make that club. One more story about the Yankees that I thought was a little bit concerning. Uh, Domingo Herman. so a few years ago, he was actually suspended by Major League Baseball for issues off the field. We're not going to go ahead and get into it, but he's prone to having meltdowns on social media. Everyone thought that he was retiring from the game of baseball because he posted this. If you do not know what this says, don't feel bad because I didn't know what it meant either. But he pretty much said that everything is done thanks for everything but then he ended it with the initials mv with the rose domingo herman's girlfriend is Mara Vesa. So my best guess is that it sounded like he was retiring, but really what he meant is that maybe his relationship was over because he deleted that story. And then he put up this post right here saying that he's excited to get back to the Yankees. And he had a quote with Aaron Boone and Aaron Boone said that, you know, it's time for Domingo Herman to take back his life. So I don't know what's happening with Domingo. He's getting a lot of second chances here. He's a little crazy, but I'm hoping that he gets the help that he needs because he definitely needs it. The final additions that I want to talk about, they're both coming from the Philadelphia Phillies. We have Brad Miller and Tony Watson. Miller, over his last 202 games, not only can he play anywhere on the field, he's had a 112 OPS plus. That is really, really, really good. And then Tony Watson, for his career, has a 2.8 ERA. So he has been very good as a lefty specialist. But the only thing is, he has a 4.69 FIP over his last 72 innings. That is very concerning. FIP is a really good stat just to look at a pitcher and say, how good is that guy at getting batters out without his infielders or outfielders getting involved? So, so that's something to keep in mind. While it's a good addition to the bullpen, maybe father time is starting to creep up because even his K per nine was down in 2020. But Brad Miller, I love that signing. Wow, what a day. What a day. Kelly Nash read my tweet. I mean, I'm going to go celebrate. I'm going to go get some canes. But after that, it is time to lose some weight because obviously 
things are happening in my life where you know what? What if I'm on MLB Network in the next two years, actually live in person? I don't want to be chubby fuzzy, so we're going to go ahead and start the weight loss journey. I want you guys to come along with me. We're going to hold each other accountable and just be positive. So thank you all so much for watching. Congratulations again to Fernando Tatis Jr. on the insane contract. If that doesn't make kids want to play baseball, I don't know what does. So thank you to the savior of baseball, Fernando Tatis. We love you.